Have you ever seen an article of clothing in this store that you knew immediately was perfect for you only to find out it was the most expensive thing in the store? Well, my friends, meet the Hamilton Spencer. The jacket of my dreams with a hefty price tag. Was making this jacket worth the time it cost me? Let's find out. Hey y'all, Jackie here and welcome to Fantastical Follies. The Hamilton Spencer. Y'all, this pattern is perfect, completely on brand. And I don't mean for my Regency wardrobe. Oh no, in real life, bolero length, puffy sleeves, military detail, Netflix, 98% match. When I saw Bernadette Banner's video on this and realized I could buy this pattern, I was like, oh my God, I'm making this pattern and it's gonna be red. In this video, I'm going to make my Hamilton Spencer and talk about what I liked, what issues I had, and try to be as transparent as possible about how much time I spent on this thing. Because for as many videos that are out there about making this incredible pattern, none of them properly prepared me for the fact that this make takes a gazillion hours Hours. What I'm not going to do in this video is talk about how terrible this pattern is. One, because it's not. It's freaking gorgeous. It has some flaws, but it still holds a lot of value. Two, because of what this pattern is and what it represents. It was designed by Paul Tazewell, the incredible costume designer of the hit musical Hamilton, inspired by the designs of that play, as well as extant examples of Regency Spencers. 100% of the proceeds of this pattern go towards the Costume Industry Coalition, which supports theater workers and costume designers. This is such a good cause. What I am going to do is highlight the good and bads of this pattern and hopefully help you get a better idea of whether it's right for you. It may not be. If you're a beginner, for example, it's probably not. The instructions are written for an experienced professional in the costuming world. And even as someone who spent years in that industry as both an actor and a maker, it not only pushed the limits of my skills, but there are no illustrations in the instructions and they can be very vague. That's not to say you should never try, but no going in, it's gonna be tough. If you do decide this pattern is for you, I hope you'll stick with me till the end of the video, where I'll talk about whether or not I thought this was worth it for me, what I'd do differently, and some best practices if you decide to make this pattern. Okay, that's enough talk. Let's get to making my dream jacket. Hello, friends. This is try-on number two. The first try-on I did, I definitely put the sleeve on completely upside down, and the under seam was like right here, and I spent a full day noodling out why the heck I had done that. In any case, I've got it on now. So I am in between sizes for this pattern. My bust is closer to one size, and of course the rest of me is closer to the smaller size. I opted to cut the larger size because I know a lot of people have had issues with the fit of this. It is a little bit big, particularly in the sleeve. As you can see, it's pretty baggy and it's especially visible in the back here. I think right at the arm side is kind of pretty baggy. However, I'm reluctant to cut a smaller size of this right now. This is a very thin fabric. This pattern is meant for very thin fabric. The fashion fabric that I'm using for this is not thin. It is quite thick. It's like coating weight wool. So while it is going to look fabulous when it's done, I hope, um, it is quite thicker than it is meant to be. And I'm going to lose some of that space once I get it on and lined. In addition, I'm still thinking I might flat line my lining. I'm using a really pretty fawn colored China weight silk for the lining, which is perfect because it's slippery, but it's very thin and that wool is kind of scratchy. And since I live in Texas and this is a heavyweight wool and silk coat and it's going to be quite toasty and more than likely in normal circumstances when I wear this, I'll be in tank top or short sleeves. So at least for the sleeves, I may flatline the lining so that I have another like layer of protection between my skin and the scratchy wool. I think I'm good for now. I am gonna give myself a little extra seam allowance in the sleeve in particular, and also in the front. It may or may not be too wide. I would rather have a little like half inch of safety room when I cut this than get it all together and find out it's too narrow for my front. So I think we're good. It's gonna turn out fine, right? Right. Okay. Bye. All right. So after I got all of everything cut out, which took ages, all right, it is so many little pieces. I'm finally ready to start the actual Spencer. Now, 
Unlike in other projects where you add the trim last, they actually want you to add the trim first. So I have started doing that. One of the big things about the Hamilton Spencer is that it uses self trim and they recommend you use a silk taffeta or a similar weight fabric to make the Hamilton Spencer specifically, I think because of the Rouleau trim. This fabric that I'm using here is a very heavy weight wool, cashmere, and nylon blend. It is, it has a pile. It's almost like velour. It's so nubby and fuzzy. Even if I had had enough fabric, which I didn't because I bought this as a remnant, I would not have made all of the rouleau trim just because of time. So I decided instead to use trim that I already had. I bought this for another project. This is a quarter inch ribbon. It's like a wine colored velvet ribbon woven through some gold thread. And I'm going to use this to do the leaves. And then I also bought some wine colored, just regular velvet ribbon. This is three eighths of an inch. It doesn't quite match the fabric. It's slightly redder, more of a brick color, but I'm gonna use it anyway. I'm gonna use it on the sleeves, the little ribbon sleeve pattern instead because I don't have enough of this and I think that would be just a little bit too much. However, I realized last night while I was lying awake trying to get to sleep that I didn't factor in the ribbons on the petals. Now, that's not 100% the end of the world because, well, the ribbons on the petals look a little suspect. So if I have enough to use this velvet ribbon on the petals, I will. If not, then I may just forgo the petal ribbon detail completely. We'll still have the petals, but it won't be outlined like it is on the pattern. Um, and maybe I'll be a little creative with it, but we'll see that's a little bit down the line. So let's get down and let me show you how I'm attaching the leaves. I cut out the design from the template and traced it onto the jacket front using Taylor's chalk. I had to make the design slightly larger than the original to accommodate the thicker width of my trim. Then starting at the bottom of the leaf, I painstakingly pinned the trim to the pattern, making sure to miter each corner to make sure that the right side of the trim was visible. I then hand stitched the trim down. This took anywhere between an hour to an hour and a half to stitch each leaf as they're all different sizes. The original has a vein running in the middle of the leaf, but I thought it looked weird with my bulkier trim, so I left that bit out. I then thread marked the darts, roll line, and the outer edge of the inner lining with contrasting thread and ironed out all the creases so the fronts were smooth. Then I pinned and sewed the darts. Once they were sewn, I tied off and clipped the threads. Then I sewed stay tape to the outside edge of the inner lining, pinned the inner lining down to the bodice front, and sewed along the lapel edge. Note that while you do sew along the lapel edge, you only need to baste around the outer edge of the inner lining and the bottom edge. Leave the shoulder edge and arm side free. But they'll never take all freedom! Then I sewed the side backs to the center back and pressed open the seams. Y'all, I am a little upset. So uh, I just got back from vacation and uh, the day before I flew home, I was finishing up on one of the bodice fronts and I was a little lazy and decided instead of going and finding my chalk to chalk line the roll line on the front, I thought I would be smart and just iron a crease in it. Well, my iron was too hot. For some reason, it melted part of my jacket. Uh, I guess because there is a nylon content in this, it was just too hot and I was so overwhelmed when it happened. The good news is, is that it doesn't look too bad. Uh, as you can see here, there's a definite crease where I ironed it and it is kind of melted in spots. But because this is the back of the collar and the facing is going to be visible more than the back of it, I think it's gonna be all right. I'm not pleased with myself, I'm really upset, but I don't think it is going to be noticeable enough that I am willing to completely take everything apart, cut another piece if I was lucky enough to have enough fabric left over to cut a second piece and redo all of the hand sewing on the leaves on the front. I just spent so much time doing that, I just don't think it's worth it. So 
let's move on. You can kind of see my pad stitching on here. I really don't think it looks great. So I am going to opt not to do pad stitching on the other side. If it looks a lot different than the other side, I may actually take the pad stitching out of the ruined side of the jacket just to make it more even, but, but that's a decision I'm going to make after both of them are done and we've seen what they look like. First though, I had to assemble it. I sewed the sides to the front and then the shoulder seams together. You press the back seams open, but press the side seams towards center front. No idea why. Moment of truth, y'all. I don't really think that the pad stitching is making much of a difference as far as what's flipping and what's not. I don't think that I'm going to bother doing all of this on here. However, I don't think it looks, it doesn't look too bad. So I don't think I'm gonna take this pad stitching out. I just don't think I'm gonna waste time doing it on this side of the lapel. Otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. It's definitely a little larger than I probably should have made it, but that's okay. I'm not that worried about it. It'll look fine once it's on. I think the arm size are gonna be a little bit too big. I might take this in a little, but I want to get the belt on first and make sure everything that way is fine, and then I'll adjust the shoulders later. Let's get going. With right sides together, pin the belt to the bodice front along the bottom edge. Once it's sewn, iron the seam allowance down toward the belt. All right, it's starting to look pretty good. Onto the collar, which I did decide to pad stitch. You can see I'm not very good at it, but hey, it's a new technique and I'm still learning. And also I'm left-handed and I think that's part of the problem and why I'm getting so mixed up. Any lefties out there, do you do this in a different direction to make it easier? Let me know. I also decided to interline the collar with some linen left over from my purple kirtle because I really want this thing to stay up. Now the pattern calls for piping on all the seams as a finisher. For reasons already stated, I didn't do that, but I did have a small amount of this gold piping left over from my mantua that was exactly the length of the bodice fronts and collar. So I decided to go ahead and pipe that portion. And when I say just enough, I mean just enough. Look at that. To attach the collar, you stay stitch at the dot, then cut. I definitely cut this too far, so if you're doing this, be careful. Pin right sides together to the jacket and sew, taking extra care to catch that corner you just cut. Then I gave it a nice, good press on both sides. Now for, in my opinion, the hardest part of this project, the sleeve trim. Oh my god. First make sure that your seam lines are marked. That's really important for this bit. I wish I'd been able to use friction pens for this, but they just don't show up on such plush fabric, so I'm stuck using chalk, which kept disappearing. I cut slits in the pattern and used chalk to mark the initial lines on the fabric. Then I went back with thicker chalk to make it easier to see. Now, if you print the pattern out, Note that this portion is color coded and it might behoove you to print it out in color. I didn't and regretted it. I ended up drawing the blue and red on my printed instructions to make it clearer. Another thing I'll suggest if you do this is to color code your lines as well on the fabric. The hardest thing is getting it pinned right and it's confusing as a heck if the color coding isn't there. The second sleeve went way faster because I got smart. I'm not exaggerating when I say that just pinning the ribbon on the first sleeve took me upward of two hours. Just pinning. The second one wasn't so bad though so at least I learned my lesson. I will say I wish I'd found some quarter inch ribbon instead of three eighths of an inch ribbon. I think it would have looked a little neater. Oh well. Live and learn. Here's the finished sleeve trim. I use these gold plated lava beads in place of the fabric ones, the pattern ones you use, because again, I didn't want to spend that time and I thought the fabric would be too bulky for it. I think they look good, even if I did sew the bows on the wrong spot. And here's the finished leaf design on the front, also with the gold beads. These are kind of heavy, but oh well. Next order of business was to attach the belt. This is about the point where I start to get very confused about the directions. I did flatline my silk lining for the belt, although I opted not to do most of the rest of the jacket. So I sewed it onto the bottom of the belt, which is what I think the pattern was asking for. I really kind of regret doing this and would have rather attached it to the top of the belt so that I could hem stitch the bottom neatly, but this stuff is really hard to rip invisibly, so I went with it. I tucked under and pressed. I wasn't happy with the way it looked, so I tried to understitch the lining, but did a really crappy job of it and had to pull out half of it. In the end, I decided to trim the seam allowance, which helped with the bulk. Good thinking, Jax. Now to face the front and the collar. I first basted it to make sure my piping was going to be okay. Then I clipped the corner and sewed it for real. 
Next, I'm going to trim down and layer the seam to decrease the bulk before ironing it and turning the facing to the inside. I've completely stopped following the directions here. I bet their version is better and neater, but I don't understand what they're saying and there's no pictures for me to follow. I'm such a visual learner. So I'm putting this together the way that makes sense to me instead of agonizing over it and getting frustrated almost to tears. I also ironed it back a little so my piping shows more. The collar gets the same exact treatment. Then to finish the inside edge of the facings, I'm tucking under the raw edges of the front facing and I'll hand stitch the collar facing over it to meet in the edges. Again, I've completely disregarded the instructions at this point for better or worse. What do you think? Did I make the right decision or should I have stuck with the instructions? Now on to the petals. The original design uses more self-trim for these, but I didn't have enough of my own trim to do them. So instead, I bought a Hotfix rhinestone applicator, which I've been meaning to get anyway, and decided to add my own spin. Make sure you mark your darts first. Learn from my mistakes, y'all. The Hotfix crystal thing is kind of brilliant, especially for fabrics. It's a permanent bond and no glue mess. I did find it to be quite tedious though. Each petal took me upward of half an hour to 45 minutes to get all the stones on, so power up your movies or audiobooks, kids, and settle down for the ride. Time to assemble the sleeves! I can't believe I have so many hours under my belt with this and I still haven't gotten the sleeves together yet. Y'all, this thing is epic. I pinned the under portion of the sleeve to the upper portion of the sleeve. Then I did the same thing to the other side and stitched both sleeves together. Why is this taking so long? Here are the finished petals with the sewn darts, both the front and the lining. I really like the way the rhinestones look. I ironed all the darts in. The instructions say to clip open the darts, but I actually found that made them lay flat, so I don't recommend doing that. Now place the petal and the lining right sides together and pin, leaving a small opening on the side for turning out. Then stitch on the machine. Well, I was sewing one of the petals closed, the needle hit one of the rhinestones, of course it did, and broke, and I proceeded to start cussing very loudly at my sewing machine. I have to admit to feed. And it sucks because I really wanted to get all this done today. I wanted to get it done yesterday, but there just is so much labor that is attached to this jacket that I can't get it done. I'm gonna go do something else for a little bit, come back to it maybe later this evening, but it's not gonna be light, so whether or not I film any of it is gonna depend on how far I get, so wish me luck, y'all. Also, say goodbye to it, folks. It's the saddest day. We're taking the Christmas decorations down. Well, starting to. <laughs> it's January 15th, FYI. Okay, so after the petal incident, I laid in the lining. This gets assembled the same way as the body. Because of the way I sewed in the collar and the front facing, I decided the easiest way to line it was to lay it in and hand sew it. The lining looks really messy in this shot, but I promise it looks neater after pressing it. Hello, and welcome to Blank Wall. Blank Wall! <laughs> I got it down. What am I stepping on? So I got everything down. It is resting on my bench. I haven't put anything away yet. <laughs> Whoops. So last night after breaking my needle, I stepped away from it for a little bit. I did end up coming back to it a smidge and proceeded to break yet another needle on the stupid leaf thing. So more rational morning Jackie this morning decided I am not going to line the petals. I was debating doing it anyway because this fabric is so thick. I, I just was worried about this jacket getting too heavy. So I'm going to take the message from the powers that be and just serge stitch the edge of the leaf and then hand tack it back. In the long run, it's going to take way less time. I also made the decision this morning that I'm going to completely flat line the sleeves. Originally, I was gonna put them in separately, like the lining and then the under sleeve and kind of do something fancy, but as I have said throughout this whole thing, this project is just taking way too long. This was supposed to be a short project to tide me over in the interim while I'm working on other things that take longer. That has not been the case, so I just wanna get it done. And it's a shame because I was so excited to do this, 
but I wasn't in the right mental state to do this. So that's my little spiel for today. Let's get the lining pinned and then we'll get it all put together and basted and ready to set in. Woo! Here is my flat lined sleeve lining. The lining gets assembled exactly the same way as the fashion fabric, only I'm taking more care to pin it because China weight silk is so extremely slippery. I definitely think that the silk needed the cotton inner lining, even if it is going to make my sleeve even thicker and heavier. Once the lining is sewn and the seams pressed open, slip the sleeve lining into the sleeve with wrong sides together. Then match all notches along the top of the sleeve and arm sign pin. I slid my arm in just to check and make sure everything was still fitting all right, then somehow decided it was a good idea to fist bump the camera before I went off to base the sleeves together. Now onto the sleeve puff. I ran a set of basting stitches along the bottom of the puff as well as the top. Then I pinned the band on and gathered the bottom edge to fit. I basted that on and then added the band lining to the other side and pinned. I'm being really idiotic right here and pinning with the silk on the bottom. Big mistake because I thought it was a great idea to serge these edges and somehow the serger ate my lining. How? How? So I decided to screw the lining all together. I serge the bottom and top edge of the cuff, then turn the seam allowances inward, and I'll just hem stitch the cuff upward. After all it's going on over the sleeve, it doesn't really need to be lined. Well, all I have left to do is set in the sleeves and deal with the petals. I might get this done tonight, maybe. I'm not holding my breath, but I would feel so much better about this if I could get this jacket done tonight. Wish me luck. Here's the finished petal with the hem. Thanks to the plushness of this fabric, you can't see my stitching on the outside, which is good. What you're seeing now are several attempts over the course of several days of me trying to set in my sleeves. Now, part of the problem I'm having is that this red fabric is so plush and frays so fast that my cut notches keep disappearing into the ether. I can't figure out what or how or where to arrange these sleeves. So eventually I think I'm getting smart and decide to set in one sleeve at a time, starting with the undersleeve, right? Logical, totally logical. So here I am, finally in frame, setting in the undersleeve with some success. Right? Huh? Right? No. With the undersleeve sewn, I can't sew on the outer sleeve puff. F. M. L. Okay, so what I didn't realize is that the arm side of the undersleeve and the arm side of the sleeve puff are actually the same size. I don't know why I was thinking they were different sizes and needed to be gathered differently, but I was wrong. And that's what threw me off the other night when I was trying to put these sleeves in. Unfortunately, that has put me seriously behind. I am so over this. I'm gonna get down on the board. I'm gonna put these two together and we are going to get these sleeves set in and hopefully not have any more problems. Okay, so here's the correct way to set in the sleeves as per the instructions. Slip the puff over the undersleeve. Match all the notches and seams. Mine don't, but at this point, I'm so over this project, I don't really care. Then once the sleeves are pinned to each other, base them together and then add two rows of gathering stitches or shearing stitches, as they call them in the instructions. To set in the sleeve, match all notches on the sleeve to the jacket, but make sure you leave the lining free for this bit. Pin the underarm portion down, then gather the rest of the sleeve between the notches. Use a tailor's hand to iron the seam allowances of the sleeve in toward the body. I'm then grating down the seam allowance to reduce the considerable bulk. Cover the seam allowance with the lining and pin, then hand stitch it down. Here are all the petals sewn together. There is a guide for putting the petals on the sleeve. Use the natural shoulder marking to place it on the shoulder. I found this guide really confusing, probably because I had no lasting way to keep my markings on my fabric and had been too lazy to thread mark everything. Mark the petal points, then pin the petals on and sew them onto the sleeve by hand. The last thing, oh my god, the last thing to do was the sleeve hem. With the jacket on, I tucked under the sleeves to where I wanted them and pinned. Then I hand sewed the lining in. 
That's the first project of 2023 in the books, y'all. And if you're one of my core subscribers that watched my fireplace chat video and want to keep tally of how many red projects I'm doing this year, this is number one of many. Want to take a guess at how many I'm going to end up doing? Leave your guess in the comments and we'll revisit at the end of the year. And if you're not a subscriber, how about hitting that subscribe button? I mean, you made it this far through my blathering. One gazillion hours! Barkley! One gazillion hours! Fancy sleeves. One gazillion hours. A gazillion hours! Well, it's done. I'm not happy with it. It's not so bad I would not wear it in public, but thanks to some decisions I made, my limitations as a maker, and my need to fit a deadline, it's not up to snuff. Was it worth it? Honestly, I don't know. I think if I'd gone in knowing how long it would take and given myself that time to do it properly, it would have been worth it. Maybe it still is, but I'm 100% going to have to fix some things before I'm happy with this jacket in a few months after I've had some time away from it. I got so sick of doing this so sick of the time it took and so frustrated that it wasn't turning out the way I wanted. So let's talk about why so you know if you decide to make this how to avoid my mistakes. One, give yourself a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. Double what you think it's going to take. Triple it if you decide to self-trim instead of buying trim like I did. Two, use a crisp lightweight fabric like silk or poly taffeta, quilt and cotton, or something of a similar weight. Almost all of my major issues with this jacket stem from the fact that my fabric was just too thick for this, like the fit of the sleeves, the lack of arm poofs, and the sharpness of the seams. And y'all know how unhappy I am that the sleeves aren't poofy. Three, Brush up on your tailoring skills. This definitely pushed me past my limits in that manner, and I think the jacket suffers from it. I wish I'd pad stitched the other lapel. There's something weird happening with the collar on that side. Learn how to pad stitch before you start this, and take your time. Four, do your research first. Watch as many Hamilton Spencer videos as you can because this will help with the construction when the instructions confuse you like they did for me. The best flat out tutorial I've found is from Jeanette at A Perfect Touch. She does a very good job showing the step-by-step -step process, which I discovered after I'd almost finished mine. Thanks for watching, y'all. And if you enjoyed this video, how about checking this much more successful make that I did? Crosby. Crosby, hey, look over here, buddy. Look over here. Who's a good boy? Is Crosby a good boy? Huh? Crosby. Crosby. Say hi, Cros. Nope. He's just looking at me like I'm crazy.